Well, hello and welcome to the Friday episode of Stand Up. I have the great Christian Finnegan and Ophira Eisenberg joining me today as I do every Friday. We'll be performing tomorrow night in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Hope to see you there if you're in and around that area. And also, Professor Eric Ziegelkahn, the law scholar of Georgia State University, joining me to talk about the decisions from the Supreme Court yesterday. That is today's show. No news segment. I stayed up. I don't know. We were together for almost four hours at the Hangout with subscribers. It was amazing and magical and hilarious as always. Kimberly Richardson, who is a subscriber and listener and supporter of the show, an amazing woman, told us about her triumph in Chicago and uh, getting reparations. It's a whole long story. I'm going to bring her on and talk about everybody involved. But she shared with us a lot of joy last night. I mean, you're going to try to share the audio from our hangout as well because it was so great and I'll try to get that up. I'm going to do a special Saturday show again I think this weekend. So great, great conversations on today's show. An amazing hangout last night and a great week of podcasts. Thank you very much for supporting me. I I had a tough week for a lot of different reasons. I'm sure many of you did as well, but the show is like my therapy. Talking to you guys is my outlet. I appreciate you joining me on this journey so so much so i'm not going to plug much other than the sponsors hey thank you to truebill indeed.com and to give well i hope that you'll visit all of those sites to support the show along with a paid subscription you can find out all the links to them in the show notes everyday show notes go to stand up with pete.com all right that's it i've got to get to my guest today I'm going to end with Christian and Ophir because we had a lot of laughs. And I'm going to begin with a very depressing, serious conversation with Pref- Professor Eric Siegel about the Supreme Court decisions. How about that? We'll get the hard stuff out of the way and end the show and the week on a high note with Christian and Ophir. I think that should work. So you all know him, Eric Siegel, on Twitter at E. Spin Siegel. He's now on TikTok. He's got a podcast. He's got books. He's got a blog. Find out all the information about Georgia State University professor of constitutional law, Eric Siegel, who I caught up with on Friday afternoon to talk about the decisions that came down from the Supreme Court yesterday. Here we go. Bringing knowledge and gloom and a guest house, too. He's got a Labrador dog. Glad to give you a poo because he's the legal eagle. Eric Siegel. Eric Siegel. Hey, y'all. Well, Lot, lots of gloom tonight. You know what that means. Also, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Doom and Gloom. Not a good day in America. Thursday, the 13th of January, 2022. Why? But a day that I predicted, I think, just last week with you. Right? Quit bragging. Uh, today, the Supreme Court decided two cases. Uh, I got both of them right. I don't always get them right, but I did today. In one case, the court said that OSHA, which is the agency that regulates um, work, and work environments in our country uh, under delegated powers from Congress did not have the authority to either require vaccines for employers of more than 100 people or testing and masking. It was a 6-3 decision with six Republicans um, agreeing to strike it down and three Democrats dissenting. And in a second case, the court upheld laws relating to healthcare workers and requirements that if a healthcare worker employer receives Medicaid or Medicare funding, they have to um, be vaccinated or or various other things. And the court upheld that because, as I said to you a week ago, the justices identify with healthcare workers, understand doctors and nurses and PAs, and they want those people to be healthy. So it makes sense to them to have rules requiring them to be healthy. Um, The justices do not now and have not for a long time associated themselves with factories and, and big companies uh, the law only applied, the, the regulation only applied to employers with 100 people or more. And this is an incredibly anti-worker, anti-union court. It has been since 2006, right. at least, really before that. You know, I've talked about that a lot in the past. Um, I do want to shout out to your loyal listeners who understand that I'm not being overly arrogant here, that three days, I think it was uh, somewhere between three and six days after Donald Trump was elected, I said, assuming he gets one, two or three picks, what's the Supreme Court going to look like? And I said, uh, abortion's unclear. Um, affirmative action probably won't like it, but who knows? But the one thing we know is that 
Donald Trump appointed judges will want to strike down laws regulating employers because the uh, anti-regulatory stance of Donald Trump and his minions and the judges he appoints will be obvious. And today is an example of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then one more thing, one more legal thing, Pete. They didn't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, first of all, no one signed the majority opinion. And that, that doesn't what happen does that very mean? often. It was, it's, so when, so there were six justices who joined it. It's called per curiam, meaning no one judge took response, justice took responsibility for the authorship of the opinion. Um, they do that sometimes when they're embarrassed. They do it other times when it's a question of time, of time. You know, this will happen very quickly. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But what I, what I do want to say is all six of them agreed to the following proposition. When Congress delegates the six conservatives, to, yes, six Republicans, when Congress delegates to administrative agencies major powers, it must do so with great clarity. The court said that requiring vaccinations of all or masking and testing for all people who work for employers of more than 100 people um, is a major power. And Congress did not give OSHA that power with great clarity. That doctrine that Congress can can only delegate major powers to executive agencies if they do so with great clarity is untethered, is not supported by any text or any history. It is a rule the judges simply made up. And I it's going to go far beyond this case. Yeah, right. Um, it's going to go far beyond this case. Now, I want to explain that in non-legal terms. Okay, Pete? Thank you. Um, so in theory, Congress makes the law, the president executes the law, and the judges interpret the law. That's the separation of powers that James Madison and others thought was important in theory. As the country got, and that worked, by the way, into the late 19th century, um, when trains took us west and the national economy exploded and our country moved from, you know, an eastern block thing to, to, to the vast western um, part, of, expanse of our country. And then Congress started passing more and more laws. And then when we had a, a Great Depression in 1930, you know, Congress decided that the executive branch had to deal with emergencies and crises that Congress couldn't possibly meet and act and deal with those kinds of things. And it's kind of like only Congress can declare war. But we know that if Russia sends missiles at us or if Canada invaded us, we'd want the president to act quickly, right? Because only the president, we can't have Congress debating this as we're being attacked, right? It's not possible. Well, the same thing is true for this. We are in a pandemic. We are in a, a constantly changing situation where it goes up, it goes down. You know, millions, millions of people get sick. Almost a million have died. And, and we know, as a matter of common sense, that Congress can't adjust to the shifting times in a quick and expedient way. So it delegated to administrative agencies that responsibility, including OSHA, to make sure that our workplaces are safe. This whole idea of this major question that Congress ha that has to be done with great clarity, um, not only is it untethered from text and history, it, it is untethered from common sense. We don't have a system where Congress can respond to shifting emergencies. We just don't. Now, if people don't like what OSHA did, if people don't like what the EPA does, if people don't like what the what HUD does, it can put political pressure on the president. It can put political pressure on the party in power. It can make its views known at the polls, which it, which, we, which we do from time to time. The Reagan revolution in 1980 was very much a reaction to a, a, a sense that the federal government had gotten too big. And Reagan got into office and stayed there for eight years on that kind of idea. We don't need judges for this. And we shouldn't have judges doing this. The bottom line is, OSHA is empowered to regulate workplaces. Right. COVID and the health of workers. COVID is a direct threat to our, you know, our employers. And they didn't say all employers. They said employers over 100. And if the worker is outside and spends most of his time, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a not carefully thought out thing. It was a carefully thought out thing. For these six Republicans to overturn 
this decision by an administrative agency is, I'm going to use a phrase I ne- almost never use, but it is judicial activism at its worst. And it is uncalled for. It's going to cost people lives. Um, a friend of mine at NYU who once asked me, how do you teach constitutional law when it's all made up? He's a constitution. He's a law professor. Um, he tweeted out today that, well, maybe the Constitution is a suicide pact. There's a famous line somewhere that the Constitution is not a suicide pact. I wrote back to him and said, this isn't about the Constitution. It's about these judges acting unlawfully, illegally, incoherently. Hmm. And he agreed with that. Um, hmm. To put it as simply as possible, who do we want to make the decisions about how to respond to a worldwide pandemic that shifts over the course of a couple of years? Um and needs to have kind of monthly updates kind of thing. And my answer is Congress, if they want to, that's fine. It should be Congress. But if they don't have the time and energy, which they don't, they can delegate that to administrative agencies. And if the American people don't like what those agencies decide, it can and has, in fact, express, express their, displeasure, their displeasure at the polls. And that's what we call fucking democracy. It's not democracy to have six conservative judges second guess what OSHA is doing based on no medical information, no scientific evidence, nothing. You know what they said, Pete? They said, well, OSHA has never done anything like this before, meaning require vaccination. Right, right. Which, by the way, OSHA didn't even do. It required vaccinations or masking and testing, leaving it aside. Hmm. Well, they said OSHA was passed, OSHA was given its authority basically 50 years ago. That was used today. Has there been a pandemic in the last 50 years like this, Pete? Have we seen this kind of crisis before in America in the last 50 years? I mean, HIV was terrible, obviously. Different, though, right? Very different than this. Um, So the idea that's because OSHA hadn't done it before, they can't do it now, that's ridiculous. Congress authorized OSHA to act in emergencies and deal with the health of workers in workplaces. That's what OSHA did. Why is it controversial? It's it's really upsetting. Pete. What are the yeah. what are people saying? What are experts saying about how what how this decision may affect other parts of our lives? So that's a little bit wonky. I don't I don't I don't like being wonky, but I'll be a little bit wonky. Um, Justice Gorsuch, Justices Gorsuch, Thomas, Alito, and Barrett, um, who dissented in the second case. By the way, they would have struck down both rules. Those four. Roberts and Kavanaugh joined with the liberals in, in the second case involving healthcare care. But those four justices and then Kavanaugh and Roberts, most of the time, um, want to use this major questions rule that they made up to basically eviscerate the administrative state. Now, they, they can't do it all in one year and they can't do it all at once, but they've accepted an, an, an EPA case that they're going to hear this term. That I, I that the facts are so complicated and it's really really a bizarre case for them to take for a lot of different reasons, but they're going to use that case to do what Neil Gorsuch's mother wanted to do uh, in 1982. Uh, his mother was the head of the EPA and she wanted to destroy it, and Neil Gorsuch wants to destroy the EPA, which is weird coming from a self-described Westerner, even though he grew up in DC. But he <laughs> it's does. still a he government wants- agency that they yeah right. Right. He wants to destroy the EPA and they all do. And they want to do that because they all don't they all don't. You 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 have been incredibly vocal and I think smart over the years in explaining how we need the government to regulate workplaces so we don't have kids eating lead and we don't have asbestos in our schools and other places where people you know are um, because pro- the, the, the profit, the profit motive won't do it. The market won't take, we know this already, the Ford Pinto from the 1960s, right? We know. They looked at it and said, well, it's going to, Ford looked at it and said, it's going to explode and kill some people, but it would be more expensive to fix it, so the hell with it, basically. Um, we need, you've been really smart, you, you've said this over the years to me many, many times, and you're 100% right. But if you're wrong about that, and I'm wrong about that, we should lose at the polls, not in the Supreme Court of the United States. And um, today's decision will go down. I mean, if this country survives 50 years from now, this decision will be thoroughly repudiated. But it's going to take a long time. And I certainly won't see it in my lifetime, given life tenure of the judges. Um, it's really sad. And, 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 and 
It used to be the case that we had Justice Stevens. I'm sorry, I'm just ranting here. It used to be the case that Justice Stevens was a Republican. Justice Blackman was a Republican, but they were kind of liberal. Justice White was a Democrat appointed by John F. Kennedy, but he was kind of conservative. Um, and we didn't have this very clear divide, but that's gone. And we have six Republicans and three Democrats. And those six Republicans, if you if you look at the data, um, Democratic presidents just got really unlucky. Jimmy Carter got yeah. no point. Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's a, I think I was just thinking as you were saying that. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but you, you no, yeah. can't you can't not think about the election of 2016 and Hillary Clinton right. lost and Donald Trump right. won. And you can talk about why and and uh, and the fact that. You know, I think it matters that she won more votes. Nobody's disputing that. Well, Trump right. did, but she won three million more votes. But that right. just goes back to what you've always talked about in terms of, you know, the the, the representative representation in government, the Senate, the, you know, the will of the people. And, it's all broken. Pete. It's all broken. Yeah, it's broken really badly. Yeah. And and you and but I, I mean, have been three judges. That. He got three judges. Donald Trump got three Supreme right. Court judges. Clearly the most impactful th- thing he did. Jimmy Carter got zero. They both they mm-hmm. both served four years. And I think George W. Um, yeah, George, the, the first Bush only got one. It's interesting to juxtapose Carter and, and Trump in terms of the impact yeah. they had. And Carter, it, right. most people agree the the man's character. He's a he's a man of great character and integrity. Yes. 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 And Donald um, Trump has weak. Zero, pe- has pe- people called Carter. Right. The complaint against Carter was he was weak and he couldn't be a good leader. But even back then, nobody was suggesting he was an immoral person or you know, the attacks on him from Reagan were never about Carter the person. They were always about Carter the leader, you know? Um, yeah. Think about it. Trump gets three, Carter gets zero. What I mean, kind of and only because <coughs> huh. got, only because Obama didn't get one, right? Or right. didn't get uh, right. t- uh, his um, second, he, third. No, he, he didn't get the last one. He got, yeah, right. he didn't get the last one. <clears throat> Obama got uh, Sotomayor and Kagan, but he didn't get the last one. Um, I've been saying to you for many, many years that our system of selecting justices is insane because it depends on death, sickness, and timed retirement. Yeah, basically, what kind of system? What kind of what kind of country does that? Like that doesn't make any sense at all. But getting back to today, and I'll, I want to put this. So I, I, I'm I've already got some feedback on social media from people who talk about free enterprise and you know capitalism and the markets and and individual liberty and. And all that stuff in regards to today's fair. decisions on the vaccine well, no, in, regard, in regards to mask mandates in general or, mm-hmm. or, or, or mask, either wear a mask or get either get vaccinated or wear a mask and get tested. And these people are saying government shouldn't play that role. I'm not I don't agree with that. Neither do you. But I'm not here to say they're, they're wrong. I, I disagree with them. Um, but that's not what's at issue today. See, that's what that's what people don't understand. The issue is not do you believe in free markets or do you believe in regulation? The issue is who gets to decide and i cannot these people what branch who, of government yes yes gets to decide and we can have debates about major policy issues where there's no time sensitivity and how much congress can delegate to the president whatever whatever but we're not in that time period right now we're in an emergency we're in a pandemic my i just found out that my dad's Somebody my dad just saw today, my dad's 92, has COVID. Oh, my no. dad's been exposed and stuff, yeah. And and my kids have all kinds of friends out with COVID. And, you know, it's not the same kind of COVID we had last year where everybody dies. But it's we don't, we, don't know the, we don't know anything about this. I'm not here to tell you what the best policy is. I don't know. I don't know if OSHA's policy is good, bad, or indifferent. But I know as much as Justice Roberts does about it. Right, right, right. Probably um, more and, because he got a lot wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just... You know, and I, and I said to you, I, I go back to this. We can talk about law all day, yeah. but the reality is, why did they strike down the OSHA 100 employee rule, but uphold the Medicaid Medicare rule for healthcare workers? It's not about law, Pete. It never has been. And in fact, somebody very nice today um, tweeted out that you know that they used to think that I was exaggerating when I said the court is not a court. They no longer think that. Um, I actually just shared that. I retweeted that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to say that what the court did today is not different in kind from a thousand other court decisions from 17, 1803 until today. There is one difference, though. It is rare the court does this during a pandemic, during an emergency, during an emergency. You would think they would be. People ask me, what kind of judges do I like? And I always say the same thing. 
I want modest, humble. Justice Souter was a modest, humble judge. He made mistakes, some big ones. We all would. You and I, I mean, you know, it's a hard job. But at least bring to it some degree of self-knowledge of what you know and what you don't know. And Souter did that. Um, frankly, to, to a little bit of, a, I mean, there have been conservative justices who have done that. It's not, it's not a partisan issue. I, people criticize Justice Kennedy for being too arrogant and not knowing what he doesn't know. And I agree with that, even though I agree with some of what Kennedy did. He, too, did not accept his limited role. Um, and and this Supreme Court, boy, people are in trouble. This is going to go on for years and years. It just is. They are setting the stage for a reverse. It's the first time I've used this phrase. OK, this is it. Thank you. for This is I, I'm going to use this phrase on Twitter tomorrow. OK. They are setting the stage for a reverse New Deal. What the New Deal accomplished. Uh, hold on, I get that. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I do have to do my live read for reverse go, go. new reverse go. New no. Deal. <laughs> yes, folks. They're gonna, yes, the reverse New Deal is going to roll back all those great. Not all. Not not all. Not all. But but a, a lot. Sorry. <laughs> well. I don't think we're going to end on a higher note than my live read for your dire prediction. <laughs> um, it, it is interesting to me that conservatives today and libertarians today want to give the court this power because there will come a time when the court will go back to being liberal. There will come that, and it's the country as we die, it's the country fades away. There will come a time. And um, I just don't understand why, why more people don't accept in good times and bad, in liberal and conservative, and everything in between, let's just limit the power of judges and vote. Why is that so hard? I don't know. All right, well, know. we'll wrap it up there, unless there's anything else. Yep. No, I'm sorry I'm going to miss your, I'm not sure when you're running this, but if it's tomorrow, I'm sorry I missed your thing last night. If it's tonight, I'm sorry I missed your thing tonight. I just have some family stuff like that. Bringing knowledge and gloom and a guest house too. He's got a Labrador dog. Glad to give you a poo. Cause he's the legal eagle. Eric Siegel. Eric Siegel. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right, there he goes. E. Spin Siegel. Go tweet at him and thank him for joining us and giving us that depressing update on the Supreme Court. That sure was depressing. Let's lighten it up, shall we? Christian Finnegan and Ophir Eisenberg, two of the hardest working, most respected comedians of our generation of comedians. Honestly, love both of them. They join me almost every Friday. We commiserate. We talk about the world, our lives, the week, and more. And tomorrow night, and we'll be doing our first date together in King of Prussia at Soul Joel's Comedy Club. Tickets are still available. Go to any of our social medias links in the show notes to them and all their information and i hope you'll follow and support them so let's get it started and another great jingle last one was pete co this one is a collaboration between gareth sever and pete co oh. ladies and gentlemen legendary podcast duo christian finnegan and ophira eisenberg christian ophira eisenegan no christian finnenberg However you slice them up, you get a different word. If you say it fast enough, you clearly sound absurd. When you say it louder, it sounds like they're real words. Christian O'Fira, Sinekin, O'Christian, Pinenberg. I don't think you're ready for what you haven't heard from Christian O'Fira and Pete. Yeah, new improved, a little voiceover hey. from, from Pete Coe. I love it. I, I love that uh, it says it's a threat that you don't even know what you haven't heard. Right. Get ready. I like it. Get ready. Yeah. Very uh, oftentimes I'm not even sure what I have heard. After <laughs> we speak. Like, what do we talk about? What, what did we say? It, By the way, when I was listening to the jingle just now, it made me think that uh, I was like, you know what? I bet these two losers are playing that wordle. Like, I bet you they're awesome at it. No, no, I huh? refuse to play wordle. Oh, I'm playing it. But yeah. I'm not one of the. I'm not posting my score. Like, super impressive. You got it in six tries. Maybe keep that to yourself, loser. Oh, Dummy. I would. I could see you posting your Wordle score. Everybody's posting their Wordle score. You know, if first of all, Wordle. I mean, great. It's one of the <laughs> talk about a first draft. Oh, yeah. I disagree. Uh, I, I, like dis it. I disagree. I disagree. I like it. 
I, I think it's brilliant. And I can't believe I didn't think of it. I mean, I can't Wordle. believe Wordle. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like wordy better. Mm. No, nah, Wordle. Mm. Wordle. Uh, and yeah, it, it just a wildfire. And people love it. Okay. Tell me because I haven't played it. Why do you love it, Pete? I don't love it. I'm not playing that shit. I don't do fucking word games. I'm like, I do like, like I'm bench pressing. Yeah. I'm, I do like sports. You know, I'm out and, there. <laughs> I'm usually I'm doing splitting logs. Too busy doing sports. Usually <laughs> too busy doing sports. Just sports the blanket games. of sports, doing sports games. Do, like running hills. I do a lot. I've been doing a lot of like cold weather training. Yeah. Yeah, hauling water up hills. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the, the the no the genius of Wordle as yeah. as someone who plays uh, is that you can't play it for more than about five minutes per twenty four hours. It's that one little thing. It, there's one word you have to solve, and then you mm -hmm. can't play it again until the end of the day. So you can only do it once a day. So it's not like the spelling bee, the New York Times spelling bee, which I'm also obsessed with, which can literally take up hours of your day if you let it. Uh, maybe not hours, but a couple hours and, and can really cut into your productivity. The genius of Wordle, to the extent that it's genius, is that it will never waste more than 10 minutes of your time. Well, let's be honest. If you are playing any of these things, you have no productivity. OK, you're not producing shit. I don't know <laughs> why. You need to cut so deep. Wow, that was really <laughs> hurtful. Towards it's Christian. really unnecessary. <laughs> it was really yeah. hurtful, specifically towards Christian, because I'm obviously I'm not I'm not a loser who would play like these word games. I'm obviously usually you know volunteering. Well, well, you have to understand, Pete, that uh, language is uh, is my instrument, and um, you know I, I I think of myself as being a maestro of the English language, right. and so right. it's important for me to to exercise those muscles so that when the muse calls upon me, I am ready to receive. <laughs> <laughs> He did it. This I was so impressed. Fun. This for the is record, so fun. for the record, I was impressed, and Ophira seemed not to be. But that's let me let me move on because okay, wait, 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 wait. One yep. last question. Can I ask Christian one last yep. question? Do you find yes. doing these word games relaxing? Um, yeah, relaxing has never been the challenge for me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's questions are over. Questions that's are not over. really well. The that's thing, not really where my struggles exist. <laughs> I wouldn't play this game because, again, I'm like probably hanging out with friends or whatever. But the thing, apparently, that's really cool about it, or is that there's a certain um, anti, like these apps are all there to make money and and keep you yeah. addicted to them. And this app, apparently, as you just said, you can only play it. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, take your email and all your information and and mm -hmm. and. and and um, log all your swipes and and it's so it's like a more and it the guy reminds made me of like the early internet do you know what I mean when right. it's like I'm just gonna put something on the internet for fun and like and there's nothing more to it than that you know and, and this was the origin of this was just someone doing it for their friend for fun yeah yeah, yeah. that was it was actually born out of like a, a a little present for someone but just wait enjoy it now because you know with the popularity of it next month it's going to be coca-cola presents wordle you know Do you think? Is he, why yeah. wouldn't he sell out in association with raytheon technologies it's <laughs> wordle tucker carlson's gonna do a whole piece on wordle <laughs> what yeah. is this wordle i can, I can already exist? see the facial how is it harmful yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know where he's gonna come down on it i can't actually predict it maybe he's gonna be pro wordle <laughs> gonna leverage it for his uh, his needs and his causes. Uh, oh shit! Everybody's wow. out there playing. I'm sorry. I was gonna do. I was gonna yes and that, but I think we it ran to its conclusion. We're we're getting a uh, we're getting a hot tweet alert coming in right now, folks. Uh, we've got a hot tweet, <laughs> and it is from Ophira Eisenberg. It is a tweet from uh, January 11th at Ophira E, where uh, it has been retweeted over seven thousand times and liked slash favorited over 100,000 times and it, it reads as follows I want my COVID test to tell me who gave it to me names I want names congratulations so Ophir it's a great tweet it's, oh yeah thanks yeah. I think it's so simple uh but uh, that's how Twitter works right like I was like this isn't Whatever. It's, it doesn't matter. It's so weird. Every once in a while, you, you'll think like, oh, man, this one's really going to light the world yeah. on fire. Yeah. Then nine likes. <laughs> I <know>. was <laughs> I, I was really <laughs> terribly disappointed by how few how little love I got sharing pictures of me and a famous dead comedian. 
Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I thought I that was, I thought my stuff was going to really really hit, you know, but apparently there was a lot of people posting and there so was a I a lot couldn't, of competition in that one. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Man, no, I, can't, I just I just couldn't okay. leverage I just can't leverage my friends' deaths uh <laughs> enough, well enough. I'm just I, I don't oh, man. do it the right you time. Just, just you wait. When Cindy Williams, who played Shirley on the Vernon Shirley <laughs> guys, I am going to cash in because I'm probably one of the few people who has a picture standing next to her. And so I figure I'll have that all to myself. Oh, wow. Oh, I can't wait for that. Well, I anything mean, else? I, I um, basically I mean, just have you guys. <laughs> oh, yeesh. <laughs> I want my COVID test to tell me who gave it to me. Names. I want names. It's 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 it's. Something that we desperately do feel uh, the need to have. How did you get it? How Every time get somebody it? gets Everyone it, I w- wants to know that. Yeah. Well, because it's a way of exercising control that it's yeah. like, if I find out how you got it, I'll just not do the dumb thing that you did. Right. And therefore I won't get COVID. Right. Right. And you want to feel better than everybody else also. But I mean, the thing is, is that I think a lot of people can tell you. Like it's, I think it's rude to ask that, you know, I'm never going to ask someone with any illness, like, how'd you get it? Cause yeah. it's rude. Yeah. Uh, although with, you know, let's just continue on the thread that Omicron is pretty light in the world of COVID. So therefore I think you can make more fun of it uh, because it's not as life threatening. Is it overwhelming the hospitals right now? Well, that has been replied to in my tweet. I love that. I make a joke and some of the Things on Twitter, of course, always go negative because that's why Twitter exists. And there's people talking, a few people talking about how dare I Oh, when, you know, they uh, the hospitalization is up. Someone wrote like this is not the energy we need right now. Oh, who God. works in the uh, and, you know, I, I just I go, yeah, but it's the energy I need. So yeah. I, it's, and it's, it's my feed. It's whatever you and who's, then it's just, who's we here. <laughs> And then it's like, yeah, yeah, I, you know, this is what we all say. I, good idea. Get mad at me. That's yeah. good. Uh, that's the yeah, root yeah. of this let's, whole let's, thing. Let's really uh, focus our <laughs> attentions on the real, the real culprit yeah, yeah. here. Go, go for it. Uh, so but I, I hate that, that attitude of like, we as treating like, like your personal Twitter feed as somehow I have to <laughs> abide by the emotional standards of a complete stranger who I've never met, never will met, but it's hitting you wrong on a day. Yeah. So therefore I'm sorry, I should have anticipated sorry. that. Yeah. Sorry. And say nothing ever. Yeah. Um, so Be better, but, Ophira. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <gasps> but, so, but I do feel like people are like, I know exactly who gave it to me. Like people know. They go, I know exactly who it was. It was this person. I mean, I'm going to perform live tonight at Gotham Comedy Club. I'm probably going to know the person that gave it to me. I had a friend who who got it a couple weeks ago, and he's a dear friend of mine, but he's like, yeah, I know. I got it. Uh, <laughs> I was giving a, a homeless man some food, and he got really close to my face, and right no. then I knew. And I was like, dude, no, I think that's other no. things that play in your head right there. Like <laughs> somebody being filthy and, you know, unhoused or whatever does not i'm <laughs> guessing he's got them. antibodies yeah that uh, I, I mean that is just so typical it's like the cockroach gave it to you like no. well how about no. this one this is <laughs> this is the one i've been struggling with lately because i've kind of come to the acceptance i'm gonna get it so you know i've done a couple things but last night i went out for a Ooh. drink with with my local adversary so i'm on i'm an activist on one side of the you know the crt in schools thing and he's the other guy i mean mm-hmm. there's lots of us but I've been going at it with him a lot and on Facebook at and the meetings are okay. On Facebook. Yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah. we've even texted, we've talked a couple times and anyway, he's like, I said, let's grab a drink. So I got a drink. My point is what if I got Facebook from someone like my adversary? What if you got Facebook from so- Facebook? COVID. <laughs> that is another <laughs> how, how different is it really? <laughs> oh my God. What if you got COVID from someone you didn't like? Yeah. Well, I think there was a guy in the front row of a show recently who admitted who is alone and he admitted that the person who had given him covid who is now his ex was had the ticket but they're no longer seeing each other yeah i mean is that a worthy of a breakup that someone gives you (laughs) yeah it's it's really (laughs) gotta be i mean it was blameless from the get-go but i mean think about how much people with AIDS were demonized. Like, you know, if we're, if we're finding a way to demonize people for an airborne virus that literally is really beyond, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not really within your control to never give it to anybody like to, to eliminate, unless yeah. you l- literally never leave your house. But, you know, 
Who do you think? I, yeah, I think like, it's just a way of feeling control. And when I got it last, like when I got OG, the original alpha form, uh, a year ago, and I was exasperated with how I, I mean, I, I was just exasperated with the whole thing, but I was also like, how did I get it? How did I get it? And I may, I was like charting things. I was treating it like it was a investigation. I was going through every second and I didn't do a lot. So it was very easy to think about where I went and I couldn't figure it out. And I was talking to my doctor who said to me, maybe it was when you got the test because I was testing constantly. Oh my and he goodness. He was like, when did you take off your mask? And I was like, the only time I took off my mask was either at home or when I got the test. He's like, yeah, that could have been it. I was like, we no, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't go make that part of this. That's insane. Did anybody did anybody ever ask you how you got your breast cancer? <laughs> no, but they wanted they the always do this. They were like, no, that, but they want to know symptoms and weird things like that. Yeah, it was I gave a guy a homeless guy a cup of coffee and that was it. Breast cancer. <laughs> uh, no, but they 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 do go through this uh, line of very. Uh, I hated it when people did this. I was just like, stop talking to me about how you're scared of you. I know it's a natural thing, but it's not what anyone needs when they are going through something. Mm -hmm. But they would be like, so it's the family history. And I'd go, no. And now they're freaked out. They go like, you know, my sister read some, some, uh, you know, now like something from breast cancer QAnon and was basically like, I heard it's like, if, if you drink a lot, do you think you drink too much? I was like, oh my God, no, <laughs> no. She was I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but now, <laughs> now I will. Now I'm drinking a lot. See, yeah. See, when I when I found out I had to have heart surgery, I was like, "Of course I do." It didn't, didn't shock me at all. I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> well, you no had. Doy. What do you mean it did shock you? You had. I, well, I'm, I had family history and all that, but even yeah. more than that, even if they had told me that I had like you know a brain tumor or whatever, I think my reaction would have just been like, "Yeah, of course I do." Sure. That makes sense. Wow, that is very zen. <laughs> that makes sense. It, it, I don't know, zen or dark or whatever, but it's just like, uh, yeah, I probably deserve that. Deserve but is not deserve fair. that. Deserve is not the right word, but I just, uh, but it did not. It was not like You're right. No, it's a punishment for existing, Christian. There was never a moment where I was like, "Me? How could it possibly be?" I was like, "Yeah, oh, sure. I'm all about that. Yeah. yeah, I am all about that. <laughs> oh yeah, so unfair." So unfair. I don't think I'm in any way kind of a fatalist at all, but I do. I, I sometimes worry that I've had such a clean and good ride with with Stop like saying it out loud. What do you just want? Uh, OK, did so let's move back smote? to your tweet. Smote? Smoted? Smoted. Smitten? Um, Smitten? All right. You're right. Smited? Let's get rid of that and talk about right. the fact all that of a sudden an anvil just falls on Pete's head. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, don't <laughs> brag. You know, that comic that brags about how great they are before they hit the stage and then you always watch them eat oh, it. That's delicious, that is delicious. <laughs> there's no better feeling than that at all what did you think did did you uh christian you had a funny tweet about this this actually made me uh, uh bring it i think bring it, it up. wasn't a hot tweet it, but it wasn't hot as hot it, let's see let's look at the numbers on this tweet uh I, oh. it's, it's pretty good it was definitely not a hot tweet five retweets <laughs> 165 right. likes but i liked it uh actually maybe i didn't now i am it you wrote Man, I hope one of the celebrities I have a picture with dies soon. And we already talked about it. But what was your reaction, both of you, to like oh Saget and the way his death was, you know, reacted to? I tend to find that shit really annoying. But yep. a lot of people who I really genuinely like and respect were participating in that. So I end up feeling like that's probably a me thing. Like there's certain things that annoy me and I'm like, no, this is a problem with the world. I'm right. And the world is wrong. And then there's certain things where I'm like, you know what? A lot of nice, sensible people seem to be on the opposite side of me. So maybe I have the problem. here. You're fine with me going on CBC and talking about him and posting the video of my interview with him. Uh, no, I don't. Have a, I mean, no, of course. I, I, you had an interview with him. You were asked to talk about it on a, on a TV station or whatever. Yes. I just I don't know. Just the, the, the sort of gratuitous. I reached out of, to them and told them that if they better book me or else something bad was going to happen. Wow. That, you know, Good for you. I would leverage someone's death that way. Uh, I, <laughs> you know what I kept thinking about? I was like, what would I rather my obituary? I just made it personal. I was like, what would I rather my obituary read or the, you know, would I rather he have like after a long battle or 
found in Orlando hotel room. What is worse? <laughs> yeah. Hmm, good. Are you saying I mean, does found in hotel room does does the city matter? I mean, when it's like a third tier city like Orlando, it kind of yeah. it kind of it right. definitely right. Paris, you would be like, well, Paris, right, or New York even, but but yeah. Vegas or uh, Orlando, yeah. Orlando, it just makes me think that you have like like a like a Chili's takeout bag next to you, and you know, uh, you have one of those crappy hotel toothbrushes because you forgot your toothbrush, oh like that. God, it, it an Orlando hotel just is an image to me. Do, do you think it though? Is. Do you think when you're like Norm Macdonald or Bob Saget dying, I feel like they would love every joke we make about their death. Well, one hundred percent. I mean, they probably credit. you can find yeah. them making comedians making jokes about as we are about our own deaths right now, and I, I think it's all it's all it's all good. I, I can't imagine anybody thinking otherwise. But I just so think about Sa Saget like would love all these jokes, and apparently he died in his sleep. They're saying so. I mean, if, if that was a choice, if I could actually sign up for that, yep. sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, but also, am I right in, in saying, because I read so many things and now, and, you know, fact and fiction, that he uh, had tweeted out that he'd done this great show and he was like a back baby kind of thing. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He tweeted something. He had. He didn't realize he had done a two-hour show right. and how he That's was so it. excited That's to be it. back on the road. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, as far as kind of like ironic, like that's kind of like when the guy in the movie is like, I'm retiring at the end of the week. And you're like, uh-oh, this dude's dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> foreshadowing. I know foreshadowing. It's like, yeah. again, like that's yeah. why it's the same sort of superstition that when you started saying, Pete, you're like, you know, I just have such a fast, easy life that I'm like, don't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk about, I know Kristen, you were following this, of course, and it, it was real, is a real depressing story today cool. about <laughs> Senator Kirsten Cinema be like, nope, I'm not going to allow the vote on voting rights for, for lack of a better way to explain it, talking about the filibuster. And it really seemed like a dagger in, in, in the heart. What are your, what are your thoughts? I, you know, I'm fine with it. I mean, she, she's been consistent i guess in her own way at least over the past few couple months uh but it's just spare me all of the but i really do believe in voting rights and i do believe because if you're, you're talking about like what you know this is the, the you know elections are what determines our leaders and 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 it's like you don't understand if it what we're trying to deal with is the actual right and ability to vote and so don't give me this song about how you're on the side of democracy and all that, because you're the only one playing by the rules. You, you know, I mean, the other side has has discovered that they can just punch us in the face a hundred times and we'll say, you know what? We don't want to be as bad as them. We shouldn't punch them. Well, then there's no impetus for them to stop punching you in the face. Do you know what I mean? Like there have to be, consequences to behavior or else it will never stop and i'm sorry it's like does she think that like she and mansions like so you think joe biden who spent 30 some odd years in the senate you think you know mark warner john tester you know the sort of more mainstream democrats you think they don't care about senate rules it, yeah. like you think you're smarter than them you, you yeah. think they're they're somehow misguided and they're they're all of a sudden to the left of aoc because they want to change filibuster rules like at a certain point You've got to trust your leaders. It's almost like when you're on the when you're on the basketball team, the coach kind of determines what the game plan is. And, you know, you kind of I, I feel like unless you have a real principled stance. You've kind of got to go with where the team is trying to go. And I, I just find it offensive to, to for them to sort of stand up uh, and, and act like they're these paragons of virtue. You know, as if everybody, all the other Democrats who want to change this rule are somehow, you know, they don't care about democracy all of a sudden. Right, it, right. It's infuriating to me. Spare me the, the sanctimony, please. Well and said. I got to say, I love a sports metaphor from a Wordle guy. I expected that kind of <laughs> basketball thing from Pete, but I'm pretty happy I got it from you. Right. It seems like the main problem with voting rights is that uh, the people aren't voting for the people that they want them to vote for. That would be the problem, right? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, they, they can no longer win <laughs> enough votes in, in, with their ideas. And so they yeah. have to make it harder to vote. And, you know, making it That's, harder for some like, of their what's own. What's getting in the way? Oh, that you're not choosing what I want. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They're, you know, the Republicans have sort of written, you know, as a group, have decided to try to wall themselves into the castle, so to speak, you know, or, or to wall white mainstream culture into the castle that it's like, all right, you know, demographics be damned, you know, and, and eventually what you're going to lead to, and this is sounds like a hyperbolic word, but eventually you're going to have an apartheid state, essentially, where you're going to have a very, you know, an increasingly small minority of this country. It's not going to be necessarily a racial apartheid, although it will be primarily along those lines, but you were going to have a small, you know, increasingly small minority of this country ruling a, a much larger, more, yep. more diverse yep. section of yep. the country. And that's just, if that can't hold, that can't, it can hold for five years, but eventually I, I you know, I don't want to start saying, you know, sky is falling shit, but it, it doesn't bode well. No, it does not bode well. You know, do you think that the anti-vaxxers are suffering from a kind of uh, vaccine apartheid. And do you think, what do you think, uh, Ophira, you're, I think, Jewish. Um, someone, <laughs> someone, com- someone compared. You know what? That is so accurate. Yeah. That is so accurate. I forget. I am, you're one I, of those no, people you're like, is she? And because I'm Jewish, but I'm not Jewish enough for a lot of Jews. I am Jewish enough for the anti Semites. So. Well, that's, that's all we need for this question. Okay, <laughs> great. So. How Jewish are you is the game. No, the uh, right, how, exactly the, comparing the Holocaust. It was again yesterday by a Republican congressman to uh, vaccine mandates. Uh, yeah, apparently that's ridiculous. upsetting to to Jewish people and, and those familiar familiar with the Holocaust. <laughs> yeah, it's like the only word they know. So they're like yeah. the Holocaust. It's like, do you, do you know any other events? Any other events? And, and do you uh, have any actual knowledge of the Holocaust? Like, like, tell me more about the, about your yeah, what's one thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about, what about if we allowed for other do genocides, Holocaust, bro? Could you, compa- <laughs> could you compare less popular genocides? Yeah. I mean, you could go Armenia, you could go <laughs> Rwanda. No, this is just a bunch of people not believing in science. It's got nothing to not the same it's, it's not, not comparable there's no this is not comparable to a genocide or uh killing a bunch of people it's a as we mentioned an airborne virus if we could stay if my my covid test came back positive the jews then maybe <laughs> i would compare it to the holocaust i feel like this is weird is this positive <laughs> negative jewish what? jewish <laughs> i feel like if you say something's like the holocaust there should be this app where you could instantly zap someone into the Holocaust Museum. <laughs> like the moment they said, oh, awesome. you gotta go. Boom. You're in and just surrounded by like pairs of shoes. Yeah. We could children. use one of the Jewish lasers to send them. Ah, yes. That's what the Jewish laser does. It, it instantly transports you into being educated. Because yeah, remember more when Marjorie Green... than a laser. <laughs> that's that's, that's what no one understood. A, yeah, that's laser has a negative nobody... connotation. Right. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Remember when um, Marjorie Taylor Greene like made her comments comparing something to not the Holocaust, and then she went to the museum, and then she walked out like, and she looked stunned. She's like, "Whoa, you know what? I am, I'm sorry, I went a little far." And then, of course, she did it again. But it was like there was a moment where she was like, "Whoa, I had no idea." Yeah, yeah. And then she was like, "Good news, no memory, short term, long term, zero." Back to what happened, what back to get my getting my face in the news. You yeah. Know that, uh, you know that feeling I had a few hours ago where I was like, I don't know how to describe it. I guess ashamed. Didn't like that. Not a fan. <laughs> ah, think I'm no. going to stop. Think I'm going to stop it. With nauseous. That. I think it was nauseous. Yeah. Was yeah, yeah. Embarrassed yeah, for saying. myself and, you know, upset and feeling guilty. Nah, done with that. Yeah, it's real exactly. funny. We got to blame someone. Well, my question about this weekend's gig Oh, yeah, we have a gig this weekend, everybody. Tomorrow. In fact, is, we could talk about this. this Saturday tomorrow. night. Yeah, Saturday night, King of Prussia, Soul Joel's. It's technically Jeffersonville, Pennsylvania. Jeffersonville. Okay. And that's what it, the flyer says, at least. So I don't know what the lineup will be. I still kind of want to go first. I assumed you were going to go first. But apparently, there's a host. 
There's a host. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Yeah, there's a host. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I know the host. Uh, I mean, that poor host. Totally Can I, I'll I just do less. should have negotiated that I'll do out. less time unless I'm killing. And so <laughs> my question. I mean, to, I want that host to work. Just if that host is listening, I want you to work. But you don't have to. You could have yeah. just. Do either of you. My game. question is, do either of you have a let's go Brandon bit? I do not. Okay. Oh, I, I really like Pete Lee's, though. Okay, well, I'm I'm just gonna do somebody else's anyway, so I'm just okay. Great. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. try to I'm gonna do a bit where I do somebody else's topical bit, and then and then do a fake like I think I'm gonna do it with J. L. Colvin, and then I'm gonna do it almost exactly like his, and then I'm gonna create a a controversy on social media where he accused me of stealing it, but I'm like, no, it was mine. Parallel thinking, but it's yep. really just like his, and then we both get a lot of new followers. I mean, yeah, sounds good. There was a dude I worked with in Tampa a few times and he featured for me. And he's one of those, you know, when you're on the road and there's like the local guy who's been doing it longer than you. And so he kind of feels like he's better than you, even though you're headlining or he's resenting the fact that he's featuring. (laughs) And every time this happened, I think he featured for me three or four times and at least twice, at least twice, but I think three times. First night, like he does his 25, I do my 45. And the next night, he does a bit that cock blocks one oh, of the jokes in no. my set. Come on, like, son. not the same joke, like, doesn't steal the joke, but just treads over the same territory. Yeah, territory. And the first time, I didn't know what had happened. So I was just like, oh, that, that bit went really well last night. Why it yep. got kind of weird and yep. we're shuffling around. And so then the next night, I watched a set and lo and behold, there's a, five minute chunk about whatever and like you motherfucker and it's just ugh, comedy's the worst yeah i'm definitely I'm gonna do that too tomorrow night <laughs> uh also just like the premise uh you know people that like just cover tons of of premises and mm-hmm. you're just like oh god what oh my goodness okay well i'm gonna have to like talk con- contextualize that in a different way and then other people have said to me just don't watch the feature who cares Oh, I always, yeah. I think you always got to watch for the, re, for the exact reason that Kristen just I said. I agree. I agree. Because there's nothing worse than not knowing why a killer thing is not getting, like in that rare occasion where, yeah, there's, they, they've tried on your material or they've done something. They dropped a turd in the, in the bowl and you're like, I didn't even know what happened. What happened? Yeah. Right. And then you just walk into it. What? I know yeah. there's, it's so, I always think about this, like picking a profession like stand up comedy where you're basically like laugh it's fine if you laugh at me, like I'm getting, I'm supposed to be dictating that, but if you just laugh at me, that's great. But the idea of not knowing something and feeling foolish on stage is something I will avoid at all costs. Right. Because your whole point is you're supposed to be the the lion tamer. You're supposed to be the ring master. And exactly. Do you think, even though like, who cares? What do we do if, if we do the gig and all three of us get COVID and our first ever gig together? Well, now we know that the next gig, we don't have to worry about that. I like it. I like the optimism. I feel exactly. like that would bode well for the tour, honestly. <laughs> I think I, so, yeah. too. <laughs> that would be. I do. That's right. Bring, right. bring your bodies and your antibodies, everybody. Well, <laughs> well, I'm really excited to see both of your actual bodies. <laughs> I know. Are we going to go for dinner beforehand or something? No, we're good. But I, Ooh, I'm really. I would... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> exactly. I'll see you on stage and then I will be driving <laughs> away after my set while you're on stage. I do have my own just gr- to my be own clear. Green room, correct. Just uh, you, I, yes, you have your own room. I'm yes. bringing a pop up tent <laughs> to to cord myself off in. Yeah, I can't wait. We'll do dinner. We'll do whatever. We'll, do, we'll hang out. We'll share like a hotel room, the three of us, until the wee hours. I guess. Wait, are you? Are yeah, you? Woo! We can talk about this off air. Yeah, but are you guys staying the night? I'm driving home. I have a two hour rule usually. Yeah. So if the, if it's two hours away, I usually turn around, and drive home, depending on the weather and if I'm if I'm tired, but. Yeah, I might take a nap in the car. No, I, I'll probably turn around and come home unless for some reason. Yeah, it's a seven o'clock show, so it'll be yeah. early. Yeah. Unless I hook up. Yeah, right. you never know. Sure. Depends yeah. how many drinks you buy me. What? Thank Seriously, you guys what? very much. And Can't you we... know I will use the recording to make myself famous. Yes. Oh my gosh, please. I know. I would That'd love be to be so a piece good. of your Actually, if you guys, family. you guys, a sex tape, <laughs> that's how you get followers. Oh, imagine oh, releasing God. a sex tape and nobody cares. 
five retweets. That would be the worst. <laughs> oh my god, the worst. Like it wouldn't even ruin your career as being a scandal. It would just ruin your career because everybody would be so embarrassed for you. <laughs> oh, I'll see you agrees. guys tomorrow. I can't wait. Right. Thanks for joining Bye. me today. Tomorrow. Bye. Yeah, there we go, Christian Figgin, Ophira Eisenberg, and all of you. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast this week. We're getting more and more listeners each and every week and every month. It's been amazing, the growth of the podcast over the past few months. I am so appreciative and thankful. If you haven't signed up for a paid subscription, you're invited to join our community, StandUpRepeat.com. I love you guys very much, and I really appreciate your support to allow me to do this show each and every day. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you and your family are healthy and safe. If you're not, connect with us, commiserate with us, be with us, join us. You're never alone if you're part of our community. And I will talk to you on Monday. Actually, special episode tomorrow, I think. It's not done. It's not in the can. So no promises, but I'm, I'm trying to release a, a Saturday conversation as well each week now, too. So that's it. I'm out of time. I'll talk to you next week. Love you. Bye. You got to stare the devil straight in the eyes. Think I can let him know it's his turn to go. See it clear and all you hear is a lie. Go get up off of your butt and down off of your fence. Yeah, even if it ain't a very friendly audience, well, they'll begin to listen when you start making sense and you stand up. Stand our ground and then stand up, stand up. Well, the founding fathers saw the land for all. They had to stand up, they had to stand up. They had a keen imagination for a crystal ball, drawing all the plans of stand up. But all they had to go on was the time they were in with other causes for laws. And since they weren't even sent, they knew that change was going to come before the change could begin. They had to stand up. All right, they had to stand up. We got to stand up. We got to look the devil square in the eye. We got to let him know it's his time to go and make it clear when all we hear is a lie. Why you lying awake wondering where the money all went? It'll be the cost of freedom now go on a spin. And you can see him flee the scene of that experiment if you Stand up, stand all right. Up. We got to speak up, we got to reach up and raise your voice in every way you know how. Don't be toes up, you got to show up. Ain't no better time to do it but now. No need to pledge allegiance to no ones and try to rise up. Show obedience to the voice inside and listen well, and it'll tell you not to run and hide. It says, stand. 